Welcome everyone. This is DJ Electra Fry here with Daisy, the Venice healer. Daisy, yeah. woo! So good to see you. That was fun watching that intro. I feel yeah, pretty I just, alive. Oh, good. I just made that real quick for you. We're gonna get a better one, but that was just like for the first show. Mm -hmm. How's oh. it going in Louisiana? Oh, let's just give a moment for like our spines to decompress. I felt like, I literally felt like myself get longer and taller. Whew. Yes, let's do that. So we have like two seconds of silence and stretching. Oh, that just felt so much better. Like all the blood going to my muscles and my joints and my neck. Oh. oh, so lovely. The decompression and expansion. Yes, definitely. I'll switch our sides. So then I think it can make you go solo. Woohoo. Yes. I like seeing your cartoon person too. Can we do a split screen? I like that. Yeah. So then people on the show could see the split screen. Perfect. DJ was on the on the mic too, but are yep. having little technical difficulties here. It's been <laughs> a while. So you guys at the bottom of the screen, I have the phone number to call in. If you want to call in and ask Daisy any questions, um, please feel free to call. The number is 424-244-1243. So call in. She would love to talk to you. And how was your flight last night to on your trip? What's going on? How was that? <sighs> I'm out of my comfort zone. Yes. <laughs> uh, I realized that I had an unconscious program. Something like I will, like I swear to my essential self that I will not travel. And I think that's what made it so like unpleasant I was just really unhappy being in the airport and just going through customs sneaking my pet through oh <laughs> good girl good job it was a fourteen thousand dollar fine so so I think I we have a call already so one sec you keep talking and I'm gonna take this call and screen it and then we'll get back to it okay hold on one sec hello uh -huh. caller you're on the line Hi, it's Chris and Debbie. How are you? Oh, Chris and Debbie. Hi. I talked to you before. What's up, You're Chris Casey? and Debbie? How have you been doing? How are things with you? I'm not really able to hear you guys, but I remember you, Chris and Debbie. I, we've talked before, right? Oh. Okay, yeah, I've talked to you before. How are you doing? I'm good. Is Debbie right there? Good. Yeah, you want to? Yeah, hold on a second. Say hi to Daisy. Hi, Daisy. Hey, girl. Hey. How's my goddess How squad? This is Debbie. How are you doing? I am feeling the humidity on my skin. <clears throat> um, I can feel, like, just wetness in the air in Louisiana. It's not California. And right, I like right. the I like the people here. Yeah. Well, How about you? Thing. How are you thriving? Like where you're living. That's right. So the way we wanted to do this oh. call was basically kind of like organic and free flow. But if you have any struggles mm -hmm. that you want to bring to the table, you guys know that 
you know. I love communication and I love opening people's hearts. And I'm here to do like a group gene empathy call. So are there any struggles that you want to share? Or is there like a tender talk or like a, a rift well, that working, keeps coming I've up over and over time. again? Maybe like the dishwasher or something like that. I've got severe anemia right now. So I have anemia right now. So I've been going through headaches and itching and all kinds of problems. They finally figured out what it was. And time for a bone scan tomorrow and another blood test or Monday. All this fun stuff, you know. It's yeah, so I'm sensing that survive. the the symptoms and having having to deal with not having your health and vitality that that right. has a huge impact and toll on your spirit, your everything. But that there's some relief mm -hmm. to knowing what it is. Is that true? That's true. Very true. When you find out, okay, maybe I'm not dying. Okay. <laughs> then I can probably handle it, you know? Life is full of daily challenges. I think I heard... You know. Go ahead. What was that? Life is full of daily challenges. We've seen some of your shows. You've been through a lot of hacks, too, from a lot of people, you know? But you still go on. You're still getting there, you know? Hopefully your family can see that too, your mom, that you're crying, you know. Mm. I love you, Debbie. And I can feel that you care I love about you too, me. Honey. And that you love me too. I know you do. Well, I think you're a good person. You, you hit my struggle you're right, on the, right on the head of the nail. What was that? A good heart. The problem is you let the wrong people in sometimes. So that's where you get hurt, you know. That part. That's some we wisdom, goddess. We can't save everybody, but we should. We can't save everybody, but we sure do try, right? <laughs> That's right. Well, yeah. I learned that. I learned that the part of us who wants to save, that that's codependency, mm -hmm. and that that if we can shift that, because wanting to save is also kind of trying to fix. And in myself, I look at it like if I'm trying to save someone, or trying to fix someone, or trying to like help them when they're not asking for it i'm not loving them as they are right. and i found that people don't really want to hear from me what i offer they don't want they don't want to hear like hey here's what i offer here do this it feels like unsolicited advice right. and a lot of people will immediately cl close down and their bodies will constrict and they will not be available get defensive they don't want to hear it because it feels like someone's speaking right. for for us when they give us advice so I found instead of going to people and saying, hey, here's what I offer, I try to go to people and just say, hey, how can I support you? And whenever I come with unsolicited right. advice or here's what I offer, I'm always shut down really quick. And then I always remember and I laugh and I'll try to say something like, oh, now I remember not to do that. That's something I'm working with. How can I support you? Um, mm -hmm. Because trying to like well, help people or fix really people. As long well, as here's you don't what get I do. stressed out, you know. I don't here's the shift if I could offer a reframe. Um mm -hmm. I like what you said. I like what you said. I it's wisdom. Like don't try to fix people. So the way I work with that is I'll right. I'll shift it like I'm not trying to fix them. I'll say like I want to share what it's like in my world, and I want to share my gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. You're doing everything you can to try to help someone, but like you don't want, like you said, you don't want to push them away by being too aggressive, you know. But it's just so hard today with drugs being as rampant as they are everywhere, and a lot of people now on that fentanyl and crap. You worry about people because it's like the streets are not as safe as they were maybe in the seventies, eighties, you know. And people just, I don't know. You value they just get right somehow and start helping more. You value safety. You know, they should put more. And you value health and you value enoughness. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I hear you naming um, accumulation. I hear you naming addiction. I hear you naming that the progression from 1970s till mm -hmm. now, I can hear you naming the progression. And there is a lot to mourn. And um, right. I like that it's being said because that's the first part is to cry buckets of tears and mourn 
so we can be tr truthful and then really creative and conscious and work with what's happening and make it really positive and wonderful. What do you think the solution is? Mm -hmm. Well, I what think do you, you do a lot of good work. You try to help people. You're doing a lot to help. And it's like the police don't seem to really not like you. I think they care about you more because they know that you do care about these people and you're trying to help. You know, but I don't know. You're right. There's a lot of people who, doing outreach. who do and don't like us. You know, you need your own outreach program. They come to you because you're, you have an open door type of thing. You're more open with these people. And I think that would help a lot. We have people here who have issues too. And we try to help them as much as you can, you know. Hey, goddess, I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt you to see, um, cause this is supposed to be like a show. <laughs> So you're supposed to be mm -hmm. telling me your struggles and I'm supposed to be helping you connect with the language of a heart of the heart, which is body sensations, ah. feelings and needs. It's like I'm doing pretty good because I'm a pretty strong person. I've never been involved in drugs and stuff and worked for over 35 years and now I'm just kind of settling down, trying to take care of this anemia problem and you're I'll be going fine. to you know, but and you're going to because really it's all in our head. And wave function collapse right. is, is the art of observing a field of subatomic particles. They do what we say according to our unconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So just see yourself as healthy and filled with vitality. I try to look at everything I eat as like, what is the fuel I'm giving myself? Do I have refined sugars? Am I making my body alkaline or acidic? I try to look at that when I'm sick. So I'm sending you healing love to your anemia. I'm going to end this call because I really want to keep it to like people calling in to try to get me to share my right. gifts and talents, which is, I don't want people giving, telling me what, I don't want to have a conversation. I want to be able to share my gifts. Right. Does that make sense? But call me Debbie. You I love talking sense. to you. You and I've been friends for a minute. You and your husband got to come and see me in Venice. As soon as our nonprofit okay. gets going, I want you to come and be a part of it. Goddess. Okay. Okay, sounds great. You hang I love you. Too. Come and see me and I'll do a healing for you too. Okay. All right. Okay, feel the love and have a great day. Love you, Debbie. It was really good to talk to you. Thanks for calling in. Awesome. That was great. That was Chris and Debbie. Thank you so much for calling in. If anybody else wants to call in and ask questions of Daisy, the number's scrolling at the bottom of the screen. We're gonna have a little more direction though. Okay. I'm not let's gonna hear have it. conversations with people. I'm not going to, I'm not here to chit chat unless people want to have a show where we just chit chat, where I just chit chat with people. But what I really want this to be about, because right now I don't, no one's taking me seriously and I don't like that. I want, I need more people to take me seriously. Okay. Well, we so have another is, caller right now. So let me get my, them on the line. Well, hold on a sec. I'm talking about call from in general. Luigi. Luigi, I, I need you to listen to me for a sec. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get control of my image. I'm, I'm, I'm about to get control of my image. And I'm about to be a boss. And I'm part of a super squad. I'm not a special one. Goddess Electra is in my super squad. And there's others. Mm -hmm. You can be in our super squad too. And I have gifts and talents to share. And you have gifts and talents to share. This is about... This space right here, I want to share my intention. This space is for me to get a hold of my image, and I'm going to share my gifts and talents. So people who are calling in are going to receive my gifts and talents. If your intention is not to receive my gifts and talents, call my other phone. 424-413-9810, and we'll talk some other time. Right now, I only want to talk to people who want to share with me their struggles. I want to hear about your rifts. I want to hear about what's happening in your relationships that you need help with because I am going to wake your ass up, okay? Because we can't afford to be human anymore. We have to wake up. We have to be superheroes because it's not our children that are going to save the world. We have no world when it gets to our children. It's us. And if you don't believe me, check. Our oxygen went to 70 to 
Our oceans went from alkaline to acidic. Now coral reefs everywhere are dying. It's a mess. I'm not going to get into it. It's superhero time. So I want to hear struggles, celebrations. I want to know what is happening so I can get you in touch with what you're feeling, what you're needing. I don't know anything. I'm not a teacher. I'm not even here to coach you. I'm just here to wake you up. Just like if you go in an AA room and you raise your hand and you say, hi, I'm Daisy and I'm an alcoholic. I'm raising my hand and I'm saying, hi, I'm Daisy and I'm a healer. And that's what I want everyone to come into this room and be able to do is raise their hand and go out into the world and say, hi, I'm so-and-so and I'm a healer. And everything we touch turns to gold because I want everyone who calls in to realize when we get past our struggles and our celebrations and we start to learn about our meaning and purpose, we don't wake up and work. We wake up and we do our meaning and purpose. We become a superhero and we would never charge for it. And we would never think about not having all of the resources we need to be able to do the work we need to do. We wouldn't pay attention to rules or laws or borders. Those are superfluous. They get in the way of our work. It's time. The only reason why there's so much poverty is because those who are in poverty believe that they deserve it. We believe that we're supposed to work. Market economy is not our friend. So we're going to make market economy our friend. Our friend, I'm not saying get rid of market economy. Market economy can still hang out. It could be all about extravagance, trinkets, treasures, treasure hunting, games, performers. But for regular folk, for basic needs, and that includes entertainment, I'm going to look at these people who are in market economy. That's free. I'm here to help us, to wake us up. I'm not Daisy the Venice Healer. Because if it was Iron Man alone, when they killed him in Endgame, Avengers would be done. I'm the super squad. Help me help us. So so I want to hear struggles and celebrations and tell me all your shit. Open your closet. Go. Luigi, right? Okay. Yes. Um, well, and by the way, that wasn't direct. I definitely though. want... Oh, no, I understand. I understand. And I want to accept your gifts and your talents. Um, but I have probably... Uh, something that I'd like to relate to you as far as struggles. Um, I feel like I am just constantly struggling to uh, achieve a higher plane of existence. And I never can. And my goal is to seek out an interdependent tribe of co-regulating nervous systems in the world. But I feel like there is no one out there who understands what I want and is willing to join uh, in this uh, interdependent tribe of co-regulating nervous systems with me. Um, what do you think? Yes, that's right. Because that's the energy that we're raised in. We're raised in obedience, separation, and scarcity. That's right. So right now that's where you are, and that's your energy, and that's your mindset. So what we do is we tweak it. We neuro-linguistically program it. And then instead of you being in a space where you feel all alone and you do not feel seen or understood or like you're around people where all of you guys make sense and are joined with shared purpose and a vision of the change that you want to embody in the world. You want these nervous systems to be with you in a tribe and you want to attract it. And you're noticing that it takes a minute. So that uncomfortableness, the, the neural pathways in our brain, it takes like 72 hours for them to come together, but they're really social. We are really social. We seek to connect. We're always trying to connect. Same with the neural pathways. They're like, and in 72 hours, they connect. So that feeling of like, oh, I want, I want, I want, I want, that's your seeking circuit. And that's like glutamate saying like, go get it, go get it, go get it. And then when you start to get it and you start to feel your trip, you're going to feel a little dopamine. Like, oh, that feels so nice. So if you visualize it and you feel the experience before you get it and then you start to visualize and then you could go into your prefrontal cortex, the space in your brain where the future doesn't yet exist, and then you roll your eyes back and you milk your pituitary gland, which is in the center of your brain, and milk it and literally visualize this beautiful little bean 
dripping juicifying dimethyltryptamine. And then you juicify the dimethyltryptamine in the prefrontal cortex of the brain. And as you roll your eyes back, you pull your tongue from the top of your mouth, you curl it at the top of the mouth, or you can put it in the lower cavity of the jaw and breathe. Rolling your eyes back, you pull your lower jaw down so you could feel your bronchial tube expand. Now you squeeze your genitals and anus tight. Engage your root tip, draw your belly up and in. And when you curl your tongue, it's called the moochie breath. And when you roll your eyes back and curl your tongue, you're relaxing everything, drawing energy in, you're opening the channels. And these energy centers, or you could call them chakras, but I don't, I don't like mysticism. I like European science shit. So I say energy centers, they get closed down. So open them and then start to visualize it so you can manifest it because it's our energy that creates matter. It's not the other way around. Everyone's trying to create everything out here, trying to change everything out there, but it's in here. So what you're feeling and you're like, oh, I want to attract it. I feel lonely. Like, oh, I don't, I want more efficacy. I want like more of what I want to be predictable and happen. And let me tell you, awakening is a lonely mess. I, I spent two years almost, like a year and a half in Vipassana all by myself looking for my tribe. I went to Venice in 2020, in June 2020, almost four years ago, still completely isolated alone. And the only people I could relate to was the homeless people and the super addicted. These people are in the fourth dimension. They're about to awaken compared to the people in the third dimension who are still doing the rat race. So when we're taken out of our nature, which is tribe, co-regulating nervous systems, like we're supposed to wake up and go to the watering hole and hang out and then go to the like food area and like graze because there's food forests. Or now in this day and age, high tech heaven on earth, friends who love to gather the food have already done it. And we don't got to pay people for this. So the reason why we're suffering and separated is because we're stuck in a world of coercive giving. And it emerges since we're a baby, because in this world, we kind of like, we let our kids cry. We want them to figure it out on their own. Like, this is not the way. We're meant to be together every step of the way. And then babies and kids are meant to be with us in tribe, watching us, sleeping with adult, like sleeping together, co-regulating, doing the work together. Kids are meant to learn by doing, not going and sitting at a desk even like the way that we sit in the position. So, and, and our shoes, the way that we walk, we're not walking toe heel, so our feet get deformed. So waking up is going to be like really crappy at first because there's four stages of awakening. You're still with me, right? Luigi? Oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry. I, I was on mute. Luigi, okay, good. You're still with me, right? You want me to pause? You want to ask anything? Because I'm about to go into the four stages of awakening because I think that you're in yeah. like the... Okay, so there's four stages of awakening. Yeah. You are, you're all alone, the second and third stages. First stage, you're unconsciously unconscious. You're asleep. You don't know that you're swimming in love. You think that you're in muck, but you're in love second stage of awakening you know that it's mucky but you don't know what it is so it's like this is when you're consciously unconscious so you know something's up so this is like when the alcoholics first get sober and all of a sudden they can't hang out with their old friends like when we first start to awaken our relationships fall away we get fired from jobs. We get evicted. Like, start st stuff starts to fall away. The third stage of awakening, you're still pretty alone. And you're suffering even more than when you're in the first stage. Because you're, like, when you first wake up, you're lonely. <laughs> it sucks. You're lonely for a long-ass time. So get used to being with yourself. Listen to a lot of meditation and stuff that makes you feel good. Because that's your reparenting voice that you're programming. So the third stage, you're consciously conscious.
So what sucks about being in the second stage is you know you're messed up and you watch yourself mess up and you don't know what you're doing or what's wrong. You just keep doing it. But at least you're waking up. The third stage when you're consciously conscious, now you have a peer group. Maybe like you found a nonviolent communication group and you share with your peers and you know about like your body sensations, your feelings and needs. Maybe you don't have NVC. Maybe it's yoga or Alcoholics Anonymous or Tony Robbins or some Joe Dispenza, some other thing, right? So now you have friends and peer groups and teachers and masters, but you don't have your tribe yet. So in this stage, when you're consciously conscious, you have peer groups. And I think this is where you're at. Is that right, Luigi? I think you're consciously conscious, like right before integration period. That's, and that's let me... fair to say, yeah. Yeah, integration period is after you're consciously conscious. Consciously conscious is like, you know how to apply the skills and tools, but if you're really super triggered, your skills and tools go out the door. When you're in the integration period, you always have your skills and tools. Even when you're hyped up, you could just calm down. And if you can't calm down, you can ask for a break. And you have tons of options. And when you make a mistake, you love yourself. And you could be honest, admit you made a mistake, mourn it, integrate that which you wish you would have done by going back and doing the hindsight. Then you can create foresight with positive reframing. And then in the moment, next time you have your insight. This is the integration period. This is where Jesus and Buddha were at. Buddha said, I am not your Buddha. Jesus, I believe, said the same thing. I believe that Jesus was like, we're all God. I don't think he said that I'm your, I'm the baby Jesus God. I don't think he said all that. I think that was patriarchy trying to colonize and control us, but I don't claim to know anything, by the way. This is not a teaching call. This is not a learning call. This is just oh, no, a, like, I'm, I'm, this is like a, you oh, get I'm to it all use in. whatever you like and awaken yourself. But I think you're consciously conscious right now. I think you're in the third stage. I think that when you're unconscious, your skills and tools go out the door. Once you have, so I want to tell you a little bit more about that. Once you start to learn nonviolent communication, it takes you from cognition, which is your sympathetic nervous system. It's when you are in fight or flight or freeze. And in this state, we are non-relational. It's all, all about defending, deflecting, talking about what's wrong, talking about what's happened, pushing people away, freezing, getting angry. So in this triggered state, we evaluate, think, strategize, demand, threaten, punish, reward, judge, blame, shame, all kinds of things. It's all about coercive giving, power over. Um, it's not fun. The language of the heart takes the brain. This is the part I wanted to share with you, Luigi. The language of the heart, it takes the brain three to five years to rewire your brain to learn it. The language of the heart is, oh, this person is feeling this because they're needing this. Oh, this person's jaw is clenched and their shoulders are up near their ears. I'm going to put my hand on my heart and I'm going to bring my shoulders down and I'm going to radiate love and I'm going to deepen my breath. I'm going to self-regulate my nervous system and I'm going to send resonating vibrations towards this nervous system to regulate theirs. So this is the shift that we want to go into and it takes three to five years if we are from a fucked up family. Yay, <laughs> are we all? And if we don't have anyone to support us, but it only takes one year for this language to integrate, not three to five years, it only takes one year if we get immersed in a tribe. Isn't that crazy? But if we don't have a tribe, it takes three to five years. Oh, you guys are little ones. Thank you. I love the energy of the kids. <laughs> well, let me know if you want someone to play with them. <laughs> oh, snap. They took me up on the offer. I got to go. Just kidding. Oh, you got to go play with the kids? No, I was just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, oh, you were, you were just getting to hear something from really Luigi good. Now, I, I, I said a lot. I want to hear from Luigi no, now. No, I definitely... I, I, I said a lot. Go uh, yeah. ahead. I, I think that's really, I think that's really great. I feel um, better. 
Luigi, you are attracting your tribe. You have my other phone, right? My, the other phone number? No, I, I don't. So text my Sorry. phone anytime, 424-413-9810. Okay. You are lovable no matter what. There's nothing you do ever that's not lovable. If you love yourself up and you don't feel and you don't shame yourself or blame yourself, you will be in a super learning state because mammals learn through play and love and joy the best. They learn very slowly through fear. It makes us very clumsy and stupid. I don't recommend it, <laughs> but I highly recommend being loving and sweet to yourself. Caress yourself a lot because your mom and dad probably didn't caress you head to toe all day long. Kiss yourself a lot. Look how lovable and sweet I am. Yeah. Lu Luigi, I don't hear you kissing yourself. Look how lovable and sweet oh. I am. <laughs> Look how lovable and sweet <laughs> I am. Come on, Luigi. Look how lovable and sweet we are. And Luigi, I want to hear an affirmation from you because the affirmations I'm hearing, um, it made me fill a bucket of sparkling rainbow love and I dumped it on you. Because the affirmations Ooh. I was hearing you say were like, I'm not getting this and I don't have this. So the sparkling rainbow love j just washed it all. And it, now it's like, oh, my God, I have gorgeous, amazing, co-regulating, loving, resonant, healing nervous systems surrounding me. I'm so lovable. Look how lovable I am. Everyone loves me. And I am a life-enriching presence. Luigi, everything you touch turns to gold. You do know that, right? I, I always hope it does. I want you to affirm, because one thing that we're taught is we're taught that we're not lovable and that we are the reason of people's pain. I want you to affirm to yourself right now that you know that you are healing loving life enriching presence and you know that everyone's life that you go into they are so lucky to have you because you know you are a magical mystical being and you just everything you do it somehow blesses everyone and i want you to start telling people that too because that's the truth that's the truth about you do you believe it i do I do. And you know I, when I, I say people, I'm not talking about humans. I'm talking about all spirits, microorganisms, all the way to earth, to bugs, everything. I, I definitely, definitely believe it. Well, at least now. At least now I do. Oops, we lost Daisy's connection. She'll be back. But I think what I heard her saying, Luigi, was that you're a healing, loving Life enriching presence. Can you say that? That's what I took from it. I'm uh, wait. I'm sorry. Can you say it one more time? You're a healing, loving, light enriching presence. I'm a healing, loving, light enriching presence. Yes. Perfect. Yes. When she oh, when she comes back, back though, yeah, I did have back. one. Oh, I, oh, I have I have one follow up question. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Luigi. Hey, Daisy, I have just one follow-up question. Um, do you prefer uh, creamy or crunchy peanut butter? Do I prefer creamy or crunchy peanut butter? Yes. I like raw macadamia nut butter, and I don't think they have crunchy. It's only creamy. Ooh, I've never had macadamia nut uh, peanut butter that, or macadamia nut You know what would be good? Delicious. Puffed quinoa with raw macadamia nut butter. Can I ask you a question, Luigi? Yeah, go ahead. Are your needs yep. for unconditional belonging being met at this time to the degree that you would enjoy? Um, I think so. Well, I mean, who, who's doing that? You could say, no, I would love to have more unconditional belonging. Or you could say, I feel such amazing, profound, unconditional belonging, whatever is true. Because it's about affirming and calling in. How well is your need for unconditional I, belonging I, being met? I, and I, I, I feel some conditional belonging. What was that? I, I feel some conditional belonging. I mean, there's... I, 
I can under I can understand how it's not unconditional. Ooh, okay. So you feel conditional belonging. Would it feel sweeter for it to be unconditional belonging? Well, absolutely. What if you were wired to thrive with unconditional belonging? Do would you believe that's true or do you not believe that's true? I haven't thought much about it. What 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 would you say would be the immediate benefit for something like that to like to my soul and to my personality? Oh. <laughs> well, you sound like you are a male hunk and kings and hunks and any type of male species, male, especially humans, they are objectified. Oh, yes. They are programmed to be providers. Go, slave. Go be an errand boy. Ooh, pay the bills. Do it now. You are programmed to. Is this the kind of conditional love you are talking about? I think so. I mean, I don't know. I, I you know, I, I feel I feel embarrassed to say that I'm unconditionally loved. I mean, it might be true. I just it doesn't feel right to say. Is there a part of you that believes that you wouldn't be humble if you were saying that? Yeah. No, definitely. I, I yeah, that's probably a big part of it. So it's more about humility. I see. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess it's safe to say. Um, it, um, I don't know. I, I, I try not to go around telling people that I'm a, you know, that I'm a superhero or that I'm unconditionally loved or that I'm some sort of uh, mystical, mm-hmm. magical being. Um, it, it, it just seems a lot to, to, well, to say. Well, can I reframe but, it for you? Know, you? It might be true, though. Can I reframe it sure. for you? Maybe not mystical, please, magical. Please maybe not all of that. But at our core, all of us are lovable. All of us are worthy, not not worthy, I don't like that word. All of us are meant to thrive with unconditional belonging. Do you wanna know what unconditional belonging means? Unconditional belonging, the first time I ever experienced unconditional belonging was when I got to Alcoholics Anonymous. And it didn't, didn't matter what I did, I could not get myself kicked out. Unlike all these other places I could get kicked out. I was told, keep coming back. It works till you work it. We love you. I was told it doesn't matter like what I did in the past. I'm lovable no matter what. Like That's unconditional belonging to me. We kind of live in a cancel, cancel not kind of, some people describe our culture as cancel culture. So kicking out, telling people they don't belong, breaking up with somebody or being coming estranged from somebody because they're not living up to social norms or whatever it is. Unconditional belonging means like in Alcoholics Anonymous, they would never turn you away. They will always love you and be there for you. You can always call people there for help. Someone will be there to help you. Venice Beach, I experienced unconditional belonging there. There's not many, re- I have a bunch of other relationships where I have unconditional belonging. Some relationships I have conditional belonging and I know which ones those are. And I wonder if that's how it is in your world also, if you also experience unconditional belonging and have some con- relationships with conditional belonging? Or would you please elaborate on what is true for you if that's not it? I don't, I don't really know how to answer that or how to respond to that. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a difficult one. Yeah, like there's another space where I have unconditional belonging. When I go to contact improv, you know my friend Linja? She and I, uh, I have, so, yeah. yeah, she and I've had a couple fallings, falling outs and I, I had this problem where sometimes I would like verbally shred people and something I work with, try not to 
say hurtful things, but that's just part of my conditioning is verbally shredding people. Stuff that other people would not accept you back. I know I, I belong unconditionally to that space, contact info, no matter what. Even though I've done wrongs and hurt my friends, I could go back and say, you know what? I acknowledge what I did. I acknowledge the impact, which I did. I had to say that to Linja. Linja, I care about the way I spoke to you. I wouldn't want anyone to speak to me like that. I'm still healing and working with myself. I love you. I care. That's the space of unconditional belonging. My yoga studio, where um, King Sweet Sweet pay, pays for us to go, I don't feel unconditional belonging there. Do you understand a little more what I'm saying now? Yeah, I do. And tell me a little bit about King Sweet Sweet. I, I, I don't think I know enough about him. Tell, no, remember or, this? Or he kind of wants... He wants to be private because he's um, he's like a pro tennis player and um, like kind of well, you know, pretty well known. So he doesn't want to he doesn't want to put himself out there. Daisy, well, can you tell us you how can you tell us how you feel about him? And yeah, like Luigi said, does he make you happy? Oh yes, yes, very happy, and. We are really great together. Um, just things flow really well. So, yeah, thank you for asking. Yeah, that's good. Luigi, thank you okay. so much for your call. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Thank you, Daisy. Thank yeah, you. It was great. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Well, that was cool. That was a great call, Luigi. And we had Chris and um, Debbie before that. And this is a daily dose of Daisy. If you guys want to call in, um, we have the line open right now. It's 424 hey, goddess. 244 1243. Before yeah. we, do we take another call? I got another call. Hello. Hello. Cortez, I have a problem at work. Let's hear it. To send a voice. Oh, it's Cortez. Hello, Cortez. How are you? Cortez. Yes, hello. Am I on? Yes, I, you're, hey, you're Daisy, on. Daisy, how are you? What's up, Cortez? Daisy, I have a question. Yes, hello, hello. Struggles, celebrations, um, a struggle, like a recurring struggle that I keep having. And I'm trying to figure out, is it on my end or is it on maybe some coworkers? But I, I work with these really old guys. I'm tragically trapped in the market economy, um, trying to miracle myself out of it by any means necessary. But they, they keep... Uh, there's one guy, he keeps giving me like the attaboy, like the attaboy pat on the shoulder. You know what I mean? It's, it's like a touch, a transfer of energy. And every time they do that, the sphincter does clench up. And I notice when I relax it, it, it's like it feels better. It goes away. Now, how do I tell these people, like, they're, they're old, they might not understand. I don't want to hurt their feelings, but how do I tell them to stop touching me? Because there's like a transfer of energy. And yep. I don't know what to call it. Yep. Um, perfect. This is a really great question. So in, in nonviolent communication, we want to use like neutral observations. And then we can either talk about what's going on for us or talk about what's going on with the other person. So I would probably, so we could try all different things. So would okay. you be willing, would you be willing to pretend to be the person who just touched me and I'm going to pretend to be you. Okay. Yes. Okay. His name is Jim. Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have said okay. that. Okay. So, so I'm going to pretend that you just touched me and I'm going to start and you're going to, you're going to say to me, whatever you're worried that they might say back that you will have to field. You could say that to me and I'll show you how to work with it. Okay. 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 So I'll go first. <clears throat> Hey, so I just wanted to share with you one of the ways that I like to connect. Um, when you touch my shoulder, I notice that um, I kind of like prickle up a little bit just because I really, really prefer to do a fist bump. And there's just something about like when you touch my shoulder, I don't know. I don't know what it is or what's happening for me, but it just kind of makes my body clench up and tense. So 
how would it feel for you if we just did like a fist bump? So I really love fist bumps. What do you think? Well, a lot of the responses have been, um, you know, what, what, what's wrong with you? What, what, was there something wrong with me? And then everybody, uh, I don't know, you know, well, like so, the COVID, so the they first, think I'm scared of COVID or something. Yeah. So the first move I gave you is to give a reframe for something that you want instead. So when they touch you, is there, is oh, there something like a bubble? That, of, like, what? like a personal bubble of space. Like a personal bubble of space. Like yeah, you want a personal zone. bubble of space. So you don't want to touch at all. So no. how about, so we, so BDSM, which is like communication with an intimate partner. So BDSM can also be like, okay. if you're, if you're at a park and you're trying to go hit on someone, what? you get, you get what I'm saying? I should try that. Okay. Yes, so, yes, yes. so, so. So let me tell you where I'm going with this. So BDSM and like contact improv is all about consent and BDSM contact improv. Whenever we're dealing with like our body and consent, we want to hear people's no as a gift because if they are willing to say no to us, then we can trust when they say yes because we know that they're not just saying yes to please us. So do you get what I'm, where I'm going with this? So it, it takes if time. You, it takes time. Yes. Yeah. So, so what I would, the more relational approach is, do you want to connect with these people? Cause if you want to connect with them, the more relational approach is to give them a way to connect with you. Cause right now their, their strategy is to touch you on the shoulder. So I would redirect them and I would be like, Hey, would you be willing to just do this to me when you see me and say hi? Just so you know, I have like a personal bubble and I'm just trying to maintain my bio field, my electromagnetic field, and I'm really sensitive to other nervous systems, especially when I'm in this environment trying to, to do what I'm trying to do right now. So if you want something relational, um, I could give you a bunch of moves for a relational response. One would be to give them a way that you, what you do want them to do. But if you want to disconnect and you don't want to say hi to them, then the most loving and kind thing to do is to be truthful about that and just say like, hey, just so you know, in this space, I am in my own zone and my own bubble and I really just kind of want to be left to myself how does it feel for you to just give me space when you see me here? Is that okay? Does that feel okay for you? I'm asking you because I care about you and I don't want you to hear it. Like I don't like you and I don't want to be your friend because that's not the case. I do like you and we are friends. It's just here. I need to take care of myself and my intention is to do this, this, and this, not communicate with people. So can you give me more information of what you want and then I can help you work with this situation a little better. This alternative um, thing for him to do instead of patting me on the shoulder. I'm just sometimes maybe, you know, afraid of like pat, pat me on the shoulder and, you know, what's next? That's like an escalation or something. But I, I will try that. I'm going to run that by him on Monday. Thank you, Daisy. For sure. Um, I wouldn't even mention like him patting you on the shoulder. I would just say something like, Hey, okay. I would just say something like, Hey, from now on, when you see me, can we just wave to each other? I'm not a very touchy feely person, but I do like you. This is how I like to connect. Just I do wave. like you. Yeah. So I would say something like I would include that with my request. I would say, Hey, I do want to connect with you. You are my friend. This is how you can connect. I think if I didn't like him, it would be easier. But oh, I just yeah, got a good one. <laughs> Hold on, I just got a good one. Me. If hey, if you want to connect deeper with me and really be my friend, let's wave at each other when we see each other, not touch each other on the shoulder. How does that sound? Yes. Yeah. Start kind of modeling what you would like him to do. So if you would like him to wave. <clears throat> 
sorry. Then you could do like a waving gesture when you see him and then kind of step back a little bit just to create a space between you, a boundary, because we all need that. Some of us are more sensitive yes, to yes. other people's emotions when they touch us. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, that. I'm, I'm really violent that. for that. It's considered violence on ourselves. It's subtle, but if we let people touch us when we don't want them to touch us, that's that's self violence. Well, and good. That was a great. People don't want to touch us if if we don't want them to touch us too. Just like if someone's talking and we don't want to listen, the most kind thing to do is to interrupt. So, um, hopefully, right. people can right. learn to not take things personally when we say, "I don't like this." Please don't do this. this, and just learn that this is the person's preference. So that's how we oh, get further okay. away from coercive giving and closer to natural giving. So good luck. Yeah, see, I never thought about it like that. Thank you. Yeah, you're just Thanks. learning to be more right. loving and honest, and that takes courage. It does. It takes the most courage to be honest in a situation, I think. Cordis, thank you so much for your call. We're going to open the line for another call now. All right, thank you. Take care. That was a good one. That was a good one. Definitely. Uh -huh. Well, if anybody else wants to call in, it's 424-244-1243. And mm -hmm. I should put myself up here on the screen. That was a real, I really oh. like that question. What do you think about touching and consent? Well, I feel like I'm really sensitive to other people's energy. And sometimes when they touch me, it does kind of shock me, like he said, because I feel that intensely, very intensely, the, just a touch on the shoulder even. So if I don't welcome it openly from the very beginning, it is shocking. And so, yeah, I do feel like sometimes I have to step back from people and just say, Hey, I need some space. Mm -hmm. I try to make it really simple. The simplest thing. I just need a little space. You know, and then we can talk about it more if they understand or if they keep coming forward, then it has to turn into, you know, I need you to step back. Because sometimes people are too aggressive with their space. Yes. I, I love what's being said. The, and I would like to add like actually I forgot what I was going to add so it must not have been important that's yes, okay sorry. that's <laughs> okay I'm just a very sensitive person and I know you are too I can tell and but at other times I just want to hug someone and I'm the one that has to ask like is it okay if I hug you and kiss you right now <laughs> you know yes I like to I like to ask and I like to try to sense the nervous system and guess like, Ooh, it looks like you don't want me to touch you at all. Is that true? Okay. We have another call. Let's bring them on. To accept, press one. To send a voice. Hello. You're on the line with da Daily Dose of Daisy. Hey, how you doing? Hello. My name is uh, my name is Stevie. My name is Stevie. I'm uh, just uh, calling into the the live show there. Hi, Stevie. How you doing? Thriving. How about you? What's going on, Stevie? <laughs> I don't know. Right now, it's um, I got out of detox for alcohol two weeks ago, and uh, I was supposed to go back to work one week ago, but I haven't done so such. And uh, I just feel like I'm uh, at a place where you know I don't want to disappoint my coworkers, and but at the same time, it's I don't know. I I feel like there's like old old habits and patterns involved in that. And I don't want to go back. So you got out of detox two weeks ago, and you were supposed to go back to work a week ago, but you don't want to go back because. It meets your needs to, cause you're. It meets your needs for like space from old activities. And are you still sober right now? And you don't want to go back because you're worried you're gonna relapse. Is that what's happening? 
Uh, no, I already have relapsed, and that's part of why I didn't go back to work in the first place. Oh, I see. So, so you relapsed, and now you're feeling like you're back in your old patterns, and you're feeling dis like you're disappointing. You're feeling disappointed because you feel like you're letting people down at work. Is that what's happening? I guess so. Yeah, just you know, my uh, my my runaway sense is just really kicking in. You know, but. And your runaway, what is kicking in? The runaway sense, you know, just you know, drop everything, don't, don't accept that sort, you know. But I know that this is a, this is a good environment and day enjoying the people that I work with, and just you know, just kind of really drop the ball these past few weeks. I, could you say that again? Because I didn't. I want to make sure I heard I just, you. No, I just. You know, I like the people that I work with, and I know that I really dropped the ball. That's right. And uh, just want to figure out how to how to move forward with it. You know. Your name is yeah. Stevie. Stevie, right? Yeah, that's right. Stevie's saying that he has been off work, and he needs to go back to work, but he's kind of prolonging that absence from work because he's scared to go back because when you take time off work to take care of yourself a lot of times people do feel resentful because they might have had to pick up your work or do what you were supposed to be there to do but at the same time work doesn't love you unconditionally and they're not going to be there for you all the time so you do need to take that time for yourself to heal yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. No one else is going to be that person to love you that much to say, I need more time off work. I'm not ready yet. Hey, Stevie. Yeah. You still hear me? Yeah, I can, I can hear you. Um, Thank you, Goddess Electra. Goddess Electra, is the connection because we're on the internet? Is that why I could barely hear? Um, I think it might be his phone because we heard the other ones, right? So I think it just might be his connection. But we're still hearing you enough, Stevie. Can you tell us more about this? Yeah, I mean, I've been working there since uh, September, you know. And uh, I won't say too much, but, you know, I'm working uh, pretty high volume as a cook, as a chef as they like to call me, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. I, just, I know that, um, oh, it's, um, in a rest, you know, in a restaurant back of the house, if, if you call out, you know, like I told them I was going to be gone for one week, you know, for going to the hospital for detox. But when I came back from that, I just, I don't know, I couldn't get I, back to the, the, the work pattern. I think I understand a little more what's going on. So you work you work as a chef, <clears throat> and you were supposed to be back a week ago. And I know the restaurant business is kind of that environment where it's easy to, to drink or do stuff. And a lot of people in that environment drink. And it sounds like... You know, you're supposed to be going back to work and you're in this space right now where you're feeling a lot of disapp disappointment in yourself. And it sounds like you feel also complacent and frozen. Like it's been a week since you were supposed to go back to work and you're at home right now and you're not able to get to work because you can't get the motivation or you just can't get the inspiration or whatever it is that you need to go. And... Um, I wonder if you just, you know, if you're just struggling with all of that right now. What's that like? Well, you know, the funny thing is, it's, um, without spilling too many beans, I work at a college dining hall, and it's there's only one week left, you know? So even if I go back to work, that's only four days of work, and I think... 
know, I was going to volunteer to work during the summer, but at this point, I think it's better to find a uh, lower stress or, you know, lower volume kind of position um, and just really work on uh, my, you know, I'm not going to call it sobriety, but, you know, just kind of getting, getting a saddle on the wild horse that is my addictive personality. You know, I know a lot about addiction, right? I mean, you know I had that? a hunch. Um, As do I. Yeah, so you know that I talk a lot about fellowships, too, and how, like, fellow fellowships, you know how to stay sober? You know about AA, like, you stay sober by doing the 12th step, and you go and give give the spiritual awakening you got to other people? You know about that, right? Yeah, yeah, they had the 12 steps up there on the wall. Could you guys, so it doesn't got to be 12 steps of AA. You could do yoga studio. You could do, like, Joe Dispenza, neuro-linguistic programming. You could do hypnotherapy. There's all different things, that somatic experiencing. There's all different things you could do to find your spiritual awakening. Do you, do you believe that a spiritual awakening is necessary in order for you to get sober? Well, um, I've had some, uh, I've, I've dipped my water, or I've dipped my toes in the water, so to speak, um, in the past. And, and um, I don't, I'm worried that I'm going to confuse spiritual awakening with, you know, uh, mania psychosis. <laughs> you know, the way that I, I let me ask and, you. Uh, let me. Out. I didn't ask you what you were worried about. I asked you if, if, if you believe you could get sober without a spiritual awakening. Do you believe that you need a spiritual awakening to get sober? Yes or no? Or do you think you could get sober without any spiritual awakening? You know, I I guess not. You know, when you put it like that, See, that's the first know. step. That's the first step right there. You have to believe. You have to believe not only that you have to have a spiritual awakening, you have to believe it's possible. Actually, the first step is believing that you are powerless over alcohol. And um, yeah, like and boy. you can get the <laughs> spiritual awakening later. You really can. It's, it's, uh, I'm do you believe that you are powerless over alcohol and or drugs? Yeah, at that point, yeah, sure. I'll say so. Yeah, okay. So that's the first step. <laughs> and the spiritual awakening, just be open to having one. Well, number two, you have to believe in a power greater than yourself. And number three, you have to be willing to turn your life over. And that is <laughs> important because if you do not turn your life over and what that means turning your life over it could be any any higher power turning your life over means that your needs matter that you're going to love love yourself up and you're going to take care of yourself and that's a commitment that, I, that you have to make that you're going to be loving to yourself my problem my problem with the whole the second step submitting yourself to high power is mm. i don't like it I don't like it coming from outside yourself. You know, I believe it should come from inside yourself. And that's why I've, you know, had a problem with uh, submitting to the Alcanomers method. I don't like the no, idea No, make it inside yourself. That's outside. okay. I, I, I agree with that. Stevie, who puts the sun up in the morning? Do you? Do you make the sun rise no, and sunset? No. Okay, so do you no, believe no. that there's a power outside of you that makes the sunrise and the sunset? I guess, you know, all right, when you put it that way. So it doesn't have to be this all higher God being that people speak of. It can just be the power outside of you that makes things happen, like the sunrise and the sunset. Mm, and believe that's beautiful. I like that. Yeah. I like that because I know, I just, good. I just, Isn't I didn't I told you my super squad's I good. <laughs> I didn't like the um, the Christian the Christian undertones of Alcoholics Anonymous, you know. Right. 
I agree. I if, felt the same you, exact you way. Are, I was like all science based. <laughs> in a, you're, you're putting it in a very different way that, uh, geez, you know, I'm holding a beer right now, tipping it while I'm having a conversation with you. I won't lie. You know? That's the first thing is being honest with it, and that's okay. So you're drinking right now. So how do you that's feel about also, that? Yeah, like, uh, well, oh, I'm tapering. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to taper. <laughs> yep, that's you know. the easiest way to <laughs> rationalize it to ourselves. But didn't you go to detox? Didn't you already go through that hard part the first time? First thing, as, soon as, as soon as I got home, I threw it away and I bought a six pack of Miller High Life. You know, and like when it's always Miller time, it's never really Miller time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you just you just went and got that six pack because that's what you're used to doing. But you're gonna create new neural pathways when you're ready to do something else. You you will, but <laughs> you know yeah, what I did just, when I got sober. I had to ask that higher power that raises the sun and makes the sun rise and set, and I said, "Please prevent me from going to Seven Eleven right now and getting this twelve pack." That same being. So, and you know what? I drove right by that 7-Eleven. Another thing. It's just, like, you're fire. You know, it's like, I'm hungry. I'm hungry, but I'm drinking beer. I could go to that same gas station. I get these six packs. I can buy a burrito. A three bucks. You know? Eat that. I could drink water. You know, I could get really into water. I don't know, dude. It's, it, it just sucks out to the addictive person. Stevie, what's the easier thing to do? Is it easier to do the easy thing or the hard thing? I think it's getting pretty hard. The easy thing is to go get a six pack. The hard thing mm -hmm. is to say, you know what, I'm going to pass on that and I'm going to get a burrito and nourish my body and I'm going to love my body and love myself. And I'm going to skip that easy way, the easy path, which is just getting that six pack. Mm. It is everybody, everybody keeps telling me take care of yourself, take care of yourself, take care of yourself. No, it's like I just I'm it's stupid. I'm just torturing myself for no reason, you know? Ooh. It's well like, Marshall Rosenberg, the creator of nonviolent communication, says that every behavior we do is for a reason. You are drinking for a reason. There are needs being met when you drink. And Marshall Rosenberg <laughs> Mm -hmm. Marshall Rosenberg used to say that people who are alcoholics and addicts, if you get them to realize that what they're doing is the most wonderful thing that they could be doing in that moment, because that's all they know, and they're doing what they know to meet their needs, if you get them to realize that what they're doing is serving life in some way, like when you drink, when you go to pick up the alcohol, there's something going on, like maybe your needs for accompaniment or empathy or um, trust or who knows what needs are not being met or you're feeling something. So, so you need like to process emotions and then you're not processing. So you drink. So once we realize what the needs are and what needs we're meeting by drinking alcohol, if you're like, then it's kind of like this. Oh, I have a need to process these emotions that I have. Or, oh, like, I have a need for this or that. Let me go meet these needs. And it's not like, let me go well, numb my, out my so friend, I don't have to feel this. My friend Nova taught me a, 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 an acronym. It's, it's an A-K-L-T. It's a, any time that you, like, are, are, are like, urge or compels internally to use drugs, it's because pulse. You are hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Yep. Oh. Yes, that is a good one. Yeah. Or you yep. can just say halt and let me think about what emotion I'm really feeling right now. A lot of times, us addicts, we don't know what emotion we're even feeling. And just saying halt and checking those four things and then checking what emotion am I feeling where is this really coming from? Not just the surface, but the deep, deep emotion that you're feeling. What is making you scared? 
Why are you scared to address that? And Mm -hmm. why are you drinking to bypass that fear? Mm -hmm. And I, and I, I like that you're putting emphasis Electra on like why they're drinking and, and the fear, because if, if, if we really like put our attention on what our needs are, Mm -hmm. then we can see that we have a lot of choices to meet our needs. Mm -hmm. That's right. There's not just one. There's many choices. That's a really good point. I don't want to be a total nerd. Just like imagine yourself like a sim, you know, and your sim is angry and you know, you're no longer in the green. You're, you're like, your little like jewel on top of your head is red now. And it's like, what am I missing? Like, maybe you haven't showered. Maybe you haven't eaten. Maybe you haven't socialized. I don't know. Maybe like the basic thing. And like, you just keep on trying to fill a hole that's already full. And then you end up with mounds. I don't know what you do with mounds, man. Well, a lot of hole that you already filled and you have mounds extra. You have mounds extra then give some away. That's the healing I feel for that portion. If you have extra, give some away. Give some love to somebody else. Do something for somebody else, maybe. Well, I think it's important to acknowledge that um, mice, when they're like with the scientists and their little experiments, if you put cocaine, they'll do cocaine. You put alcohol, like addiction, when we're living unnaturally and taken out of our environment, addiction is is natural but if we're living in our nature and we're free then like rats and mice they don't touch the cocaine or the alcohol we don't touch the cocaine or the alcohol if we're in a tribe interdependent with fellowships experiencing unconditional belonging feeling like we make sense are seen known understood like many of our basic needs even biodiversification a watering hole like oxygen in our air our oxygen is down to 20 percent. that probably makes us stupid too like our basic universal needs are not being met so if we first become aware like oh i'm not thriving the way that i'm meant to i'm having a healthy reaction to traumatic stimulus in the world and now this is the day and age the pivotal precious time where my generation has to figure out the new way to live on the planet so if we really want radical honesty and to be really creative and conscious, let's just acknowledge tr- truthfully what's actually happening. Of course we're addicted. Of course we're choosing drugs and alcohol or whatever we're choosing because the world is stressed out. We have nuclear families telling everyone they got to separate and mobilize. Even the kids are in school all day and coming home doing homework all day. Like kids are loaded up with work. Grown ups are loaded up with work. The old people are supposed to just expire and are lonely and bored all day and everyone else is lonely and bored. We're living in a world that's unnatural and out of our nature, and now we're waking up, which means that the wrongs that were done, just not even that long ago, but in America it was a few hundred years ago, but for our ancestors, tens of thousands of years, if you have you know, European DNA like I do. But for, in, for indigenous, like in the US, it's only been a couple hundred years since they belonged to the earth. And the shift is when you own, now you have to control and you become territorial and you immediately shift into your sympathetic nervous system because now you're keeping tabs and you're labeling and you're categorizing and you're othering and you're, this is patriarchy. This is domination. This is colonization. Our nature is resonating, co-regulating nervous systems in a tribe that's part of an ecosystem that's symbiotic with the planet, that's part of the whole, that's co-creating together, that evolved together that synergistically benefits by just being you don't you know like our way of being hurts the planet and we're suffering because we're having a healthy reaction to being out of balance so your addiction is healthy because you're and right now by the way you're in the fourth stage of awakening because for you it's do or die you don't get to go back to the third stage the, you're you don't get to go back Because at this point, for you, it's do or die. Either you're going to die a drunk or you're going to get sober. And you might die a long time from now. But if you choose to awaken, this is is your chance. 
Um, so I accidentally pressed the wrong button and I lost TV on the call. TV, please call back if you want. That was a great answer, Daisy. Thank you, Goddess. I loved your answers too. I liked how you pulled it back too, like with what you said about the sun it was really moving to me. Like there is a greater power outside of ourselves, but we're also a part of it and it's in us. And the way you kind of tied it all together, it's just really juicy and brought nuance and wisdom. Oh, thank you. Well, we have another caller. Can we answer it? A doop -a doo Okay, let's do it. Call from. <laughs> to accept, press one. Okay. To send a voicemail, press two. It, this might be interesting. I don't know. Hi, you're on the phone with Daily Dose of Daisy. Hello. Hi, who's this? This is Bob. Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi. How are you doing, baby? Do you have a question for Daisy? Yeah. I was wondering. I'm currently going through lung cancer, and I'm trying to quit smoking. How can you help me? You're going through lung cancer. And you want more health and vitality? Is that what you said? Trying to quit smoking. Yeah. And I don't you want to like what the doctors are telling me. I want to try some Western or Eastern medicine and some zero healer. I thought you could help. Yeah. So what needs is smoking meeting for you? How does it make life wonderful and what needs get met? Do you have... Um, do you have an internet that you could Google universal needs list? I'm not very good with smartphones. But okay. I know the nicotine is good. I'm going to make some guesses then. When you smoke cigarettes, does it meet your need for relaxation, reprieve, connection to self? Yes. Yes. Does it, does it meet your need for soothing? Yes. Yeah, and it burns does, my bro. What was that? It burns my throat. Yeah, it burns your throat. So, so that when you smoke, um, it helps to to meet a need for like satisfaction. You feel satisfaction Comfort. after you smoke. Is that true? Yes. I want you to pay attention to how you feel and I want you to right now with your imagination you could close your eyes if you want I want you to feel what it's like like the good feelings about smoking like imagine yourself okay. taking, imagine yourself taking an inhale on the cigarette and feel the smoke filling your lungs and then when you exhale your breath feel like the smoke coming out and then maybe take another inhale and just like as if you were smoking like Feel like all of the dopamine and serotonin, all of the chemicals that come out of your brain and how you like it. And I want you to just okay. notice. Yeah, I want you to just close your eyes. I want you to feel inside your body. And I want you to just notice how when you think about smoking, how your body does like it. And I want you to see that you are getting pleasure and you are getting your needs met, that it's not all bad. Do you see that? Yes, I do. The work on okay. breath work. Yeah, so so I want you to just notice how your intention is to give your body pleasure. Your intention is to care for your body. Is that true? In a certain way. I know it's not healthy, yes. but just could you see how you're caring for I yourself by giving that. yourself satisfaction and pleasure? Yeah. So yes, I, I would like to live. That well, we're gonna get there. First, I want you to just appreciate. First, I want you just to appreciate and I want you to love up. We're like really love up the part of you that smokes. I want you to feel yourself taking a puff on the cigarette. And I want you to visualize okay. yourself smoking and think about how lovable you are. Your smoker self and think about your lungs and what color are they inside? Are they pink and beautiful and glossomer lungs? the way that beautiful, healthy lungs are? Can you see any little bits of tar that are brown or black? And just visualize, and I just want you to shower yourself in love, like fall in love with it. Like, I love you, because it's important to love these parts up if we're going to reintegrate them, okay? So important. Okay. That is amazing. 
So love it up, love it up. And this is just a shadow part that you're loving up. Could you feel that this is a shadow part of who you used to be when you would smoke? And could you like separate the self? Feel your smoking self kind of like floating out of your body and then like really look at that smoker self taking puffs of cigarettes. And I want maybe your eyes get a little teary and your eyebrows melt. And I want you to feel how lovable you are that you have good intentions that when you're smoking, you're just a breathing being with struggles and celebrations, looking for pleasure and joy and connection. And all you want to do is just thrive. And I want you to feel tremendous love for that part of yourself. Just love your smoker self. Do you feel that? Yeah, I do. Thank you. Tell me what it's like. It feels great. Maybe I can find my love for myself. So the reason why we're why we're loving your smoking self up is because we want we want to release your smoking self. And before we release any of our past selves, we want to love that self. So we love and release. Because if you love yeah. and release, yeah, if you love and release something, you're sending it good energy. You're you're saying, "Oh, this is what I was feeling and needing." And I can see how I was choosing it. And it was meeting my needs at that time. But I'm also able to meet these needs for satisfaction, for care, for pleasure, for tranquility, relaxation. Smoking does a lot of wonderful things, socialization. And I want you to visualize these beautiful needs you were trying to serve. And I want you to Take the energies that used to go to the smoking, like literally grab those energies and harness them and pull those energies out of the smoking. And I want you to send them out into the universe somewhere else. Literally pull those energies out of the smoking and be like, okay, I'm sending these energies for relaxation, for tranquility, for connection to self, time to self, socialization. All of smoking has a lot of upside. So everything that was going on for you that was you like about that send those energies out to the universe and say give me give me give me (laughs) because we want that we want relaxation we want tranquility and joy and satisfaction and all those things so affirm that affirm it thank you and now let me ask you What's happening to your smoker self now that you affirm it? Like, where did your smoker self go? Or did they, are they dissolving? And is there like another self appearing? And what is that self like? What do their lungs look like? How do they feel? Does this other self take deeper breaths and have more stamina and energy and life force? What's it like? Yeah. I see a future of vitality and long life. And to love and release it, don't hate it. Then it, it was a part of me, but I still gotta love it. The pain. That's amazing. I wanna ask what gift are you gonna give yourself? Because if you take away smoking, then what gift will you give yourself? When I stopped doing drugs and alcohol, I gave, and by the way, I used to smoke too. I used to smoke packs of cigarettes a day. Um, I instead gave to myself contact improv, skateboarding, yoga, breath work, nonviolent communication, Alcoholics Anonymous. I gave to myself, I mean, I could keep going on. I gave to myself a lot and I still give to myself. So you don't have to answer it, but you, but you could tell us like, what gifts are you going to give to yourself instead of smoking? Maybe more time with my family or just a gift of health. A gift of what? Of health. Well, the thing that with family and health is these are not like doable things. I could, I could go to contact improv today and say, I went to contact improv, right? And spending time with family. Like what I'm saying is smoking, you're like, doing something like you could go do it it's like something you can give yourself it's a physical act 
So what's something that you could, and I don't know what it is for you. Maybe it's painting. Maybe you're, maybe you decide you love to cook now, or maybe it's grooming yourself. Maybe now you just love to like groom yourself and make sure your skin and hair and nails are healthy. I used to play the harmonica back in the day, but it's kind of hard with my lungs. Maybe if I, I did better, picking, I could do that. I recommend picking up harmonica, any kind of wind instrument, get those lungs you know, work I will exercise your lungs. That might be really good for you. It's like a, also also a physical therapy for your lungs. But if you can't do the yeah. harmonica right now because of your illness, what about trying the ukulele or the banjo or or just I was thinking something. about an accordion. I thought one in my local pawn shop. An accordion. That's pretty cool. I think that takes a lot of breath. But you can get back to that. Yeah. You can. Yeah, just try. Just try. I could try the drums with the guitar, but I got to be a little quiet in my apartment. Ooh, gotcha. I just thought of something I want to share with you, Bob. Every time you yeah. smoke, every time you smoke, I want you to say with the intention to love and heal. And I want you to affirm that okay. everything you put in your body is gradually more loving and healing. Because even though we know smoking is not loving and healing, if you're programming your body that everything I do is gradually more loving and healing, your body will eventually follow the program. Do you believe in neuro-linguistic programming? Tony Robbins kind of proved it. Yeah, I believe it, honey. I follow your channel and see all your stuff. So I, I trust your word. I don't know everything. I'm older, but you're not a smart young lady. Well, Bob, it's been real great connecting with you. Do you have my cell phone number, 424-413-9810? So you could reach out and we could yeah. keep in touch. Thank you. Sorry for cutting off that other guy. just wanted to talk to you. So, <laughs> well, I, like talking. I like talking to my friends, Thank too. You. So it was, it was really great to hear from you, Bob. And just keep affirming that everything you do is gradually more loving and healing. And you're so lovable. You've got all the wisdom. You know how to do it. You know what to do. Keep up the good work. Thank you, honey. Have a great one. Bye-bye, y'all. Have a good Bye. one. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for calling in. And I think that no we problem. love and release your smoking. It's okay That's to let right. that go. Thank you so much. Love and you nice. helped a lot. Both of you. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, that was a good call. That was a good call. Dang, I didn't. I didn't realize you had such mad skill, Goddess Electra. Oh, uh, what skill? <laughs> so I want to remind everybody: Daisy has her other channel at Daisy the Venice Healer. Go like and subscribe to that other channel. We're gonna build both up and make them both amazing. And we're going to do Nga. Adubadu. 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 Okay. There's a reason I do gibberish. It's actually very wise. A wise sage once said, Adubadu do do. Adibabli bli. Because it helps you release all kinds of juicy elixirs. What do you think, Alexa? I do too. Sometimes language is so much work thinking of the next right word. What if we just said, Baboobly boo? It feels a lot better. <laughs> and it makes everyone smile. <laughs> <laughs> that it does. When I have my healing circles, I'm, I make everyone do gibberish and look right into each other's eyes. <laughs> but I make them do high-pitched gibberish. <laughs> I love that because you don't have to be good at it. It's like, just do what feels right, you know? Yeah. A sweet swash, 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 swash. I love it. I love it, too. That's amazing. Alexa, this was your idea. This was such a good idea. Well, it was your idea and my design. We both, like, came up with it. I love it. I love it's it. so much fun. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, I should come speak in Louisiana. Um, I, was yeah. a, I was in my hotel lobby. And I was like, there was all these girls working in the hotel. I was uh -huh. like, hey, where I come from, I'm a real life superhero. They were like, really? I was like, oh, yeah. Amazing. I was like, 
the kind of superhero I am is the one that says that we don't have to work. The one that says that we don't have to have merit-based systems. And the one, the superhero that says to us, hey, the only reason you guys aren't rising up is because you believe you deserve to not be thriving right now. But if you knew that you were meant to thrive, you would rise up. And they were like, oh, come and speak here. They're like, yes, rise up, rise up. So I was thinking that. that. I didn't bring my bullhorn, though. Can we see your view, like the grounds of the property? It It is really green. Yeah, let me show you guys. It looks really pretty. It is really pretty, actually. Oh, my gosh. I live in, we live in California where you don't have that much ground at all. Oh, I want all that yeah. space. That must be so nice to be out in that open space. It's really gorgeous. It's beautiful. It well, really good. Is. Well, if anybody else wants to call in, call 424-244-1243. Maybe we could take one more call. What do you think? Um, do you want to do a little yoga together? Yeah, or, let's do that. Let me think. What can we do that's fun? Let's do something fun. Okay, I know what I want to do. Um, okay. Let's you and I share our needs that are being well met right now and our needs that are not being well met right now. I'll go first, and I have a list of universal needs. Ooh, could you post one up on the page so people could look at it when they call in? Uh, yeah. What do you want it to say? What's your need? Um, so Google universal needs list. What is this? Oh, it's a little bug. Sorry, a bug flew on me. I know that bug's just another me. Universal needs met. Is that the name of the website? Oh, no. Universal needs list and then pull up the images and it'll have like a vocabulary list. Okay. Ooh. And then, so this is a good place where we can share from. And then we, once we got our needs, we could talk about our feelings and our body sensations. Oh, good. Okay, I got mine. This, this one might work. Let me find this one. Okay, what's yours? All right, here's mine. It's all messed up screen, though, so we'll use yours. Okay. So, my needs for... My needs are being well met for... Go ahead. Just keep talking. I'm pulling it up as you talk. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going through the list right now. Clean air and water, fluid water, fuel, food, health, movement, rest, sleep, shelter. Uh, ooh, I could use more touch. Um, my back feels like it wants to be walked on. So needs, I want more touch. My needs for wellness, self-protection. These are all being well met. Community, companionship, friendship, interdependence, being well met. Uh, needs for, let's see. I would like more love, more family. I would like more. Um, transcendence together. And also I have a need for more um, more accompaniment specifically with women. It's raining men in my world forever and I just want to be surrounded by women right now. <laughs> Fair enough. I love that one. It's true. It's true. Men are just so easy to attract and good female friends are sometimes harder to keep. Mm -hmm. At least for me. My goddess squad is coming together now, though. I'm so glad like you and I connected and I met Diana through my YouTube channel, too. She's like one of my best friends. And yeah, like pretty much all my really close girlfriends I met through my channel. (laughs) Well, there you go. Uh Um, I did not get a good image. Let me try this one more time. So I just went through the list myself. 
Yeah. And the reason I like doing it, it feels good for me just to acknowledge like, is it like consistency, dependability, predictability, stability, reliability, like these needs are being well met. And then sometimes I'll get to one. I'm like, Ooh, I want more of that. So just to be able to call in, like, I want more being seen. I want more efficacy in my actions. I want more, whatever it is I'm longing for. It feels really beautiful to acknowledge it and then affirm it into the world with a witnessing presence. So that's what it felt like when you, when you were witnessing me and I would love to do the same for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, what needs of mine? Let's see right now. My needs of self-love are not being met fully. I have to say I have a very loud critic that mm. says everything I'm doing is bad. Everything I'm doing is negative and nobody likes me. And that's just, I know that's not real. <laughs> it's just what my negative self-critic says. What do I do? That means that other people were saying those mean things to you before. And now that voice stuck in there. I know how that feels. Is that what it's like? Yes. I feel very protective, goddess. Like, I wish I... I wish I could time travel. In fact, I am time traveling to all the moments when all those, you know, whatever those like blaming, shaming, like, um, you know, like, like disgust or whatever voices, Mm -hmm. I visualize myself accompanying you in all those moments so that whenever those voices come toward you, I have my arm around your shoulder. I'm like, no, she's the most lovable queen in the world. How does Aww. it feel? How does that it feels feel so much better it? having you by me to stand up for me and be like, those people aren't right. Or I even just that. accompanying you. Like, because sometimes just being alone when it happens, but if we have someone standing there, like, you know, and everyone can feel their presence, like, like, oh, you mess with the bean, you get the whole burrito. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Aww. So good. So you are loving where you're at right now. I can tell you, you seem pretty comfortable there now. It took a minute, but you seem really comfortable there. Your, we didn't go through your knees yet. I am comfortable. Because we were talking about the inner critic voice. Mm-hmm. I, had, I had a really shaming, blaming childhood. And I had a really yeah. harsh inner critic voice. So I could yeah. really so I feel like my needs are not being met because I keep hearing that shaming critic voice. And so I'm not loving myself like I should. So it's like a two part thing. How do I get rid of that shaming critic voice and accept the loving voice of, I don't know who's loving and vo- who's loving me. Anybody love me? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> like I don't even know the loving voice. Yeah. The shaming critic voice, I believe, is the part of us that got hurt. And those are usually really young parts. Or it could be our angry parent voice, I believe. And have you ever talked to that voice? Like have you ever have you ever been like, Oh, do you like I'll give you an example. Daisy, oh, you're so stupid, Daisy. Oh, I hear that all the time, like 10 times a day. I hear that. (laughs) So then it's like, I would say something like, oh, are you really disappointed in Daisy right now? Because you want others to like Daisy and you're worried that she's not bringing the kind of harmony and consideration for others that you would really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll even name it like in our critic voice. Definitely. Or angry parent voice. Um, how do you reprogram that voice? Um, usually what I do is I'll write it. Like I have to write a story about it and kind of get it all on paper. And then just sort of in my mind, tear up that paper. So I can visualize that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So process it, get it out on paper and then tear it up energetically yeah. dissolve it yeah i love that you know what was really fortifying for me with changing my inner critic voice how so 
uh, I used to call my psychologist Yvette. We, we would do our sessions together and I would say, hey, I really want to change this part of myself. And she would say, oh, love it up. And then I would call the next session. I would say, hey, I really want this person to not be like this and stop doing this. And they would say, oh, just love it up. Love them up. And then I would go and I'd say, hey, there's this thing about me. And she would say, love it up. Love and it didn't it matter. Yeah, like didn't matter what I said. It was like, there's something wrong with this person. Oh, there's something wrong with me. Or there's some, it was always love it up, love it up, love it up. And eventually I'm like, dude, I don't even need to call you for coaching anymore. <laughs> I love that. Just love um, it up. I'm going to put that. I'm going to write that on my wall. Love it just up. Love it up. And that inner critic voice, I would just be like, I love you. I remember the day my, I remembered I was riding my bike and my brain was quiet for a whole five minutes. Now it's quiet all day. I will never forget that. I was like, holy shit. I wasn't even in a yoga class. My brain was quiet. I programmed wow. my voice to be quiet. My brain finally shut up. And every once in a while, all I hear is, I love you. Oh, I love you. Like, I'll start. That's amazing. I'll give you an example. Like, King Sweet Sweet will do something, and my brain will try to start talking shit about him. Or mm -hmm. it'll do the same thing, try to, try to say, you know, say stuff about me. And I will just immediately say, I love you. I love you. Aww. I love you. And I try to add in, I trust you. I love you and I trust you. That's a big deal. That's a big one too. Trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like King Sweet Sweet and I don't fight at all. But because of the way I've changed my inner voice, like when, when he gets a little grumpy or angry, like at the airport, I put my headphones and I said, listen, I do not think like that anymore. Anger is the result of unnatural thinking gotta be angry on your own i'm putting on my headphones like, there you go this put in my headphones um so I love it's like because yeah, even when so you're close with someone you still need your own time sometimes too but that's the that's the inner voice though like once we get rid of our mean inner voice we won't even listen to other people's mean we won't listen to gossip or sarcasm if we do we'll Uh oh, is it me that's frozen, or is she frozen? Um, anyone? Are you back? Okay, you're back. You, you froze up for a sec. Yeah, you froze up, or I froze up. I don't know what happened, but you're back. I didn't freeze. I could hear you. Oh, I froze. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I care. That's another thing. That's an Electra. That's another thing I changed in my inner voice. I don't say I'm sorry anymore. I say I care. Because if you look at the root of I'm sorry, I'm sorry means like, I feel shame. Where if you say mm -hmm. I care, or I acknowledge the impact, or I want to learn and grow, like, you're, you're saying something more. Yeah, and shame is such a dead end emotion. It just goes nowhere except down. And it's just one path you do not want to follow that shame path. So let's follow the caring path. Yes. Good. I like that so much better. Thank you. You have such great advice and my so advice. Oh, you do too. And go to at Daisy, the Venice healer, subscribe to her new channel as well like this video and come back for more. We're going to have more shows like this and Daisy's yeah. still going to do her shows where she's all over Venice beach on her skateboard. Woohoo! Yeah. This was the Electra Wawa show. Electra, you're so lovable. Wawa, you're so lovable. You're so amazing and gorgeous inside and out. Come to you're Venice so and hang out with me, goddess. I know we have to hang out soon. I'm close by. Me, so you we'll, and Diana we'll will do a out. show together. That would be fun. Definitely. Yeah, we can have more guests on these shows. We can do so much. So we have plans. That part. <laughs> that part. I have All right. I love it. Are we good to go? Are we going to do this again? 
let's love and release and do it again tomorrow. All right. We love and release you. Love and release you.